not for the man. And you are there. here because you deserved it and you worked hard. And you are allowed to be emotional because you are a hard fucking worker. This is Good Looking Out. Today on Good Looking Out, we have lifestyle influencer and creative producer Shameless Maya. Since launching her YouTube channel in 2012, Maya has reached over 80 million views and 1 million subs. We also get the expertise of sneaker designer John Geiger, who disrupted the industry with his one-of-a-kind customizations. John is the mastermind behind his self-titled sneaker collection and the apparel brand Diet Starts Monday. Now, let's meet our young creative entrepreneur. My name is Diane Holloway. I'm 32 years old from Phoenix, Arizona. I'm an interdisciplinary footwear developer. My brand is basically a conceptual mood board. Every day, if I see something really cool with an existing design or existing brand that's putting out something, I merge two different concepts. So it could be something with Adidas, it also can be something with Nike. I kind of like to go against the two brands that are competing against each other because those are something you never see happen. A lot of my work comes off of that. Just building and then actually constructing my own new design within their design. My passion for sneakers started back in college. I attended Arizona State University. I went into the School of Industrial Designing. I wanted to compete against the guys, so what better way to just kind of do that? Making sneakers. There weren't a lot of women in the field. Um, there especially wasn't a lot of, you know, black women in the field, and that's kind of really what drove me to really want to pursue footwear developing. I do have an original sneaker that I've developed back in 2017. When I came out with my product, it sold in four hours, which was really nice. And then from there, I just kind of expanded on my research on what I really wanted to develop. Creating conceptual designs and using existing work allowed me to kind of elaborate my research. Creating your outsole within a pre-existing pre outsole that's here, you know, knowing how to cut. And get your hands dirty and active while you're building, so that's basically it. <laughs> The advice I would love to get from the panelists today is just ways to continue to keep pressing on or just researching more of my endeavor and to motivate and encourage more people like myself that want to get into footwear. I see it as part of my research. What else can I improve? What can I do to make better? I'm ready to do this thing and show them that this is something different. This is Diane Holloway's way. Hi, my name is Diane Holloway. I'm an interdisciplinary footwear developer. I'm originally from Phoenix, Arizona. I'm here to present my interdisciplinary approach to footwear. I've been designing since college, but it's been nine years, six years plus of like manufacturing experience, four years of installment experience. So a lot of it has to do with just bringing those elements together and just kind of formulating, like I said, my own interdisciplinary so it's not the traditional way. The interdisciplinary approach to this is actually combining two existing concepts and placing them into one. This shoe in particular that you see here, which is my traditional sneaker, this is an Adidas i5923 and a 700 OG made into a low top. On your right, the uh, Converse style of, of Nike, the suede with the zip on the side, and then I have the 700 OG. So this is just showing a progression of what it is. I actually made this on the way here just to kind of show you guys how quickly I'm trying to develop something versus kind of going through the traditional process. I wanted to show you guys my video um, I did to get together with my team and just kind of present how I started the process I'm getting here. What I do, like I said, is very inspired by Yoshi Yanomoto. I'm very intrigued with Daniel Arsham. All of my products kind of is correlated with installments, so it's telling a story about everything of what I went through. But the process is what I'm really trying to encourage people is showing like it can be possible. You can do this with the existing product. This is something I'm doing with Don C, or at least I'm presenting to Don C, which is he's a huge fan when it comes to Nike, obviously the dunks. So I did a merge between a Virgil Abloh blazer and then I mixed a Jordan 1 with it and had the laces kind of laying down from the back. This here, I'm here at HBA, I was invited. Got to see Virgil Abloh, which was one of my biggest inspirations as far as changing the game when it comes to sneakers. It was a really cool, unique experience. Here is my very own setup that I created. So every time, like I said, I develop sneakers and I create, you know, a storyboard along it and just creates installations that use. This was used with EPS foam and I cut out the entire wall. The whole entire space was used EPS foam. I had to show this because I recently had four tumors removed from my uterus, um, which is essentially something I, I don't want people to feel that 
whatever obstacle is holding them that they can't keep pressing forward. You know, this could have easily turned into a cancerous situation. And considering this is how big of a situation that came out of me, I've managed to also relink with my mother and my father after being in foster care and aging out. Although it looks rough, that's kind of like my story, you know, or although it seems there's some imperfections, that's the best part, that's the characteristic when it comes to developing sneakers. A lot of those experiences and the things that I've done is kind of what made and assembled these sneakers. That was a speech. <laughs> you came. I love the conversation about the sneaker. I definitely would love to touch them. Here you go. Give us some time to talk. Yeah. We're uh, going to bring you back in in a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. So okay. We'll see you in a little bit, Diane. Thank awesome. you. Thanks. I like the idea of this. To yeah. me, this is art. I'm very proud of myself for being here today because not everybody gets in this position. Don't nobody ever get calls to be like, hey, speak about what you love. From a business side, mm -hmm. I think that she's doing three things and she needs to narrow them down to like one or two. Okay. She made a shoe from scratch and then she also has the art aspect of it. So yeah. it's either like you want people to wear it, you want it to be an art, or you want to make your own brand. So I think her best bet would be to, to focus on her own brand. Um, this is her own soul. This is not very easy to do. This isn't lasted correctly, yeah. but the reason why I'm obsessed with this one is because of the soul. Even though it's not great, having a straight idea from paper to this concept, to a product, mm -hmm. it's like a good $60,000. Because okay. it's almost like five to 7000 just for each size. Mm -hmm. Number one, the whole like bulky is in. And two, it's kind of like wearing dirty shoes is okay. To me, it's it has like a two, three year lifespan. Like yeah, this yeah. bulky yep. thing that's happening. And it's cool. It's like some of the stuff looks good. Like once the August that were dirty, they were cool. You know, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. But it's not going to last long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The thing I'm worried about is who are you making these for? Think of like an artist, you wear this on a red carpet or something. Yeah. But you don't wear it every day. Yeah. They were very super supportive about me as a person and just, you know, very genuine about, you know, my health, but just who I am. And then they're able to just see that I'm still standing here today and that I'm able to present in front of them. It was great. Good. Yeah. Not for more, and you are here because you deserved it and you worked hard. And you were allowed to be emotional because you were a hard fucking worker. Health and then just meeting my dad. That was like the biggest blessing ever, you know? Yeah. Oh, you're good. You're good. Thank you. All right, so let's have everybody settle. Diane, let's get you on standby. Okay. Camera's eye to everyone's still speeding. Still speeding. Still speeding. All right, so you're going to walk in on three. Here we go. Three, two, one. All right. Thank you guys. Welcome. Thank you. Right. <laughs> so the producers were telling me you were having like a moment backstage. What was going on? I was. I, I was crying. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I didn't want to cry in front of you guys. Let me say this. There's not a lot of women in the field of men's footwear. Yeah. There's not a lot of African-American women. Yeah. And I feel like I can be that inspiration to a lot of brown, black boys, girls, just anybody of that nature that really want to pursue this. I okay. That's why. Respect that, Diane. Yeah. yeah. I so it. just a few questions about the shoes. Yeah. Who is buying this? These are people who are very interested in wanting to combine two different concepts. So like. Mm -hmm. This could be your, this could be your Don C's, these could be your, or just the average Joes that really want to see stuff merge. But the average Joe, what's the price point for this? Because this is not average Joe price point. That's true. Yeah. But there are people who really want to invest in what they look like. Everybody mm -hmm. has an investment on looking, looking good. And what's the price point for your services? My price point can range between 245 to four. It mm -hmm. just really depends. When it comes to production of sneakers, with footwear developing, production lines can mm -hmm. range to like, a lot of manufacturers want you to get like 500 pairs. Yeah. This you give the op you get the option to have one pair of your own or yeah. just sell and see how well you're doing. And if this is something to hit, then you can make more on okay. your own account. So what's your goal? What do you hope to achieve now that you have like kind of two iterations of what you're doing? I really want to sell online. I think it would be a, a very fast process. Yeah. Um, it's almost like similar to what Adidas and Nike is doing on all these days. Yeah. But because yeah, they're le they're needing yeah. people like us to help push along with culture, I feel like I can, can be that. Online custom? Online custom. Okay. Like, you get to go through a range of footwears that you like, and you're like, I want to see these two merge. I want to see what that looks like. I'm not a big fan of the custom stuff because I made that crossover, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously. 
the top one is what I'm more interested in. Yeah. Um, when you did the mow of the sole, yeah. you did that locally? Yeah. And you just did one size? Well, I did three sizes of it, of the models. And then I ended you up just, doing pre-orders and they like sold out. Like a 10 through 12, you put on yeah. one sole? Yeah, and they, yep. Okay. Um, I think from, if you want to be respected as a, a footwear designer, I think you should go more of the route at the top. Yeah. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. Yeah, that's, yeah. like I said, I've made that crossover. Those aren't probably, they weren't probably lasted, right? Normally you do a compression or an injection molding when you go through a manufacturer, but mm -hmm. I didn't really want it to do that. I kind of wanted to do a different route. To... I meant the upper, was it lasted to the sole? Oh, perfect? yes. No, it, it is. Oh, it is lasted? You can put them on and walk out right now. I mean, Diane, I think, you know, just your story, your background, and just your presentation today was really great. I appreciate it. Um, my feedback um, for you is honestly, the custom stuff is, that's fine. You yeah. know, it's a business within itself. Right. The hype beast exists. But just understand who your audience is. Definitely. Because at the end of the day, the everyday person can't afford this. Correct. You know, and I don't know if this is something that they can wear every day and like, just seeing what you have on. Yeah. Those are dope as fuck. Thank you. Yeah. But just, I just want to say, me and Complex want to offer you some money towards your business. Dope. And personally, with you being out here, I want to take you to a few of the companies that I go to from Louis Vuitton and nice. Fendi to the fashion shows this year. Oh, nice. uh, just the events that they have in Los Angeles. I'd love to take you so you can just see, you know, what other brands and things are doing just when it comes to footwear design yeah. and stuff like that. So you can just stay ahead of the curve. Amen. Hey, yeah. Blessings. That's dope. Thank yeah. you so much. No problem. If you have um, needs for production or even a business plan, because yeah. how far along are you with that? Um, I have a business plan. But I can you have do. it. You can definitely, it. yeah, send yeah, it I'd over. Love to. Yeah. And if you have like a collection that you need video production on, just let me know, and I can help cover that aspect nice. as well. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> I would like to have you come by. I mean, I have a showroom there now, and the nice. office is there. We just moved in, so I would love to have you come by and maybe last them correctly, or sh like show you the other process what I got going on. Okay. Just gotta keep yeah. it quiet. Man, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Keep the vlog quiet. I got you. <laughs> but Diane, thank you so much for yeah. joining us. Today. Thank you guys. I All appreciate right. it. No thank problem. You guys. Oh, man. Thank you. No problem. Yeah, man. Thank you. Okay, well, now I need a hug. Okay, <laughs> no, I know. I was like, I'm gonna give you a hug. Yeah. All right, thanks, guys. Take care. Right, no problem. Bye. Bye. Sneakers is my art. So it was really great to hear everybody's feedback about what they thought about it. I love the honest opinions about, you know, the sneakers in itself. I love the energy and I love the feedback that they gave. And I'm looking forward to what I'm about to do later. When John Geiger was speaking about my customs and he said he wasn't a fan, it's all right. I took it as it's just criticism. It was a positive criticism. This is someone who came from the custom culture. So, you know, when you get tired of doing customs, sometimes, you know, you kind of know a lot about that. When Seamus Maya said video production, I was like, yo, I'm getting, I'm getting all these attentions. This is great. Like, Maya is awesome and like and just her presence and just her just her structure, just her guidance into helping me have a better presentation. That's ultimately the best thing. When Karen says she wanna take me to Louis Vuitton and Fendi, that is gonna be huge. Like that's the ultimate dream to any designer. So I have to go. Like, that's awesome. I wanna thank all the cast and crew. They've been so amazing towards me. Thanks, Complex. <laughs> SneakerCon hits Atlanta and the 6th in October, and we're fresh off the heels of Fashion Week in both London and Paris. This means Sneaker Watch is in full effect, from luxury footwear to customization to exclusive collabs. Whether you watch the runway or check the hottest blogs, you know there's big money to be made in the sneaker game. So let's talk the simple facts with Karen and designer John Geiger. You know, you've had relationships with Adidas, Nike, mm -hmm. and just all the other footwear brands. What made you go independent and decide, you know what, instead of collabing with these companies, I'm going to just go on and do my own shit? Because they wouldn't let me do what I wanted to do. Really? <laughs> it's the only reason. I feel like Kanye has made this point as yeah. his reason for leaving Nike to go to Adidas. So what was the pushing or the trigger point for you? What exactly weren't they letting you do? Did you have limitations on design, on product, on from the, a marketing level? From, like, I'll what probably was say about 80% of the collabs that come out now are shoes or projects they already have and they just you know, like, hey, John, we have this project. Attach we feel it. like this is gonna work for your mm -hmm. demographic. Like, let's slap your name, slap your name on there. Pick a color and let's keep it moving. That was a big deal yeah, for you. From yeah. start to finish, you wanted to make sure, mm -hmm. like, yeah. you were aligned. And so, none of them were letting you do that. No. Oh, okay. Not saying it will never happen. Yeah. So we've seen this like emerge of like fashion brands coming out, and they seem to be in the forefront right now of like go-to shoe. Mm -hmm. Before it was like, all right, I gotta have my Jordans and my things, and now people are on the Balenciagas and stuff, and it feels like the clunky heel is in. What's yeah. your take on it? 
one, I think it's just a trend. Mm -hmm. uh, we go through trends. It will be it will be in in season, out of season. I think it's just a trend for now. Mm -hmm. But I also think that the consumer is more influenced by not athletes and now and yeah. musicians and uh, movie stars. So I think we're seeing a change in people aren't buying shoes because of athletes anymore, and mm -hmm. they're more of like the reality stars, the movie stars, the musicians. So what's the pros and cons of being a direct to consumer? Uh, the pros are obviously financial. Um, I do very well direct consumer. Um, I guess it's probably from following on social media. Doing in stores help, like with that stuff. The the cons, I would probably say, you know, when you have a store like Barney's buy a large, you get like upfront money, like a yeah. net sixty or something like that. So that's the cons. But the pros are a lot better than the cons, obviously, in independent. What goes into creating your own, venturing off to create your own shoe? Because people just see the the finished product, mm -hmm. and I know we were talking about like molding and price point and having just investors. I'm starting with the mold of the sole is not a very easy task. It mm -hmm. could range anywhere from sixty to one hundred thousand dollars, and then you have to get lasts, which is like the inside of the shoe, basically mm -hmm. the mold like went in there, and the, sh the upper is like built around it, and that gets put onto the sole, and then it gets taken out at the end. Okay, yeah, it's a pretty crazy process. Now let's take a question from one of our complex viewers. Hey Complex, thank you so much for the opportunity. My name is Benjamin Steinhorn, I'm 20 years old, I'm from Portland, Oregon, and I'm the co-founder of ShoeBio.com. ShoeBio.com is a revolutionary sneaker search engine that helps you find your favorite sneakers for the best price all across the internet. So my question for you guys is, how do I build relationships and make more contacts with businesses and brands that I want to collaborate with in the future. All my collaborations so far have been pretty organic where it was we had a dinner or you know we had some drinks and we discussed what we wanted to do and how we would partner um, and that really just set the tone for like how the relationship was going to go mm -hmm. and then we just went from there. You know but what about in this climate now we have all these new young up-and-coming mm -hmm. designers what do they do? Um, we have social media now which is very easy to get mm -hmm. in contact with someone or get someone to see you. I would mm -hmm. probably say use social media to your benefit if you have to send 100 DMs, send 100 DMs. That wraps up this episode of Good Looking Out with Karen Civil. Be sure to tune in next week to see if our next entrepreneur has what it takes to impress our panelists. This is Good Looking Out.